Hey, look who's walking around. How are you, kid? Who the hell are you? Huh. You know, good question. I'm Sans, your friendly neighborhood skeleton. What's up? Store? Behind me? Yeah, that's the grocery store. Unfortunately, it's closed. What a pain. Really wanted to buy some milk. Someone ought to complain to the guy who runs it. Hey, bud. Are you busy tomorrow? I need some help with something. It'd be great if you could come over. I live just next door, you know? Sure. Wow, you were deliberating for a while. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Like, one second. Gee, what's wrong? Don't want to hang out with a stranger? Well, I guess I shouldn't complain. Huh? What are we going to be doing? Oh, I'm not going to be there. That'd be weird. It's just going to be you and my little brother. He needs friends. Thanks for hanging out with him. See ya. Holy crap, this town is huge. No response. With a distant... Trussel? Trussel? Of bones? That's... weird. Oh, are you the human that lives at the top of town? Wow, my mommy told you- told me about you. Does it hurt to be made of blood? Is that them talking from the window up there, or are they talking through the door? Looks like there's a little bunny up there. And yes, it does hurt to be made of blood. Hmm, that sounds like the knock of a beginner. Come back when you've gotten better at knocking. Oh, I remember you, fucking knocking person. I remember you. You were right in snowed in the beginning town. I think there's any secrets down here? I'm trying to use the buildings here. That ah, doesn't seem like it. Yo, Chris. You survived Susie. I mean, I never saw her beat anyone up, but uh, I'd be careful. Like, one time me, Snowy, and Jockington were playing handball, and she just kept creepily watching us from the corner. Then when the ball rolled over to her, she was just, uh, froze solid, and kicked the ball as hard as she could right into Officer Undyne's car. Then Undyne came out, smiling, cracked her knuckles, and totally wiped us at handball. Anyway, Susie sucks, Chris. Nah, Susie's alright. Ooh, you're lucky, Chris. Hold on, are you the... Are you the one that likes to tell terrible jokes? You got to miss class with Alphys. It's not fair. If I skipped class, my dad would never let me hear the end of it. That's actually not even remotely funny. Oi, Snowy, what did I tell you about knocking the door so hard? Oh, I n whatever that accent was, I nailed it. Don't do it. It's really gonna hurt your face. We don't have arms, you know? <laughs> hey! What? Why is the teacher in some creepy alley? Are you looking for anime in the garbage where it belongs? Oh, Chris. Chris, you're okay. Ah, uh, I was really worried when you didn't come back. Where did you go? Did you skip class? Well, don't worry about it. I'm a cool teacher, you know. You're not in trouble. Ooh, well, let me know if you need anything. Well, apparently they don't feel out of place, because they don't even feel the need to explain themselves. Dirty trash can. Dirty trash can. Trash can full of well-kept flowers. Huh. It's a saucer of milk. Are you trying to, like, get a cat? Oh, Chris. 
Did you want to talk about something? Yeah, what's up with the saucer? Oh, the saucer of milk. It's for my kitty, Mew Mew. She's a perfect angel. Huh? What does she look like? Well, I've never actually seen her, but... Ever since I started putting out milk, it's been disappearing. So I'd like to think that there's a cat. M my cat. Oh, That's so sweet. By the way, you probably shouldn't actually put out milk for cats because they're lactose intolerant. It's not the biggest deal in the world. They're, I don't think they're going to die from it, but... They drink enough of it could give them, you know, diarrhea. Flowers. Oh, these flowers. They're from your dad. He, he always asks how you're doing in school. Then gives me a bouquet of them. Actually, that he always gives me flowers it really makes me wonder if he... If he likes... If, if he li likes the awesome comics I lent to him. Honestly, he kind of reminds me of a superhero, Chris. He's huge and can kick my ass. So where have I gone and where have I not gone? Uh, dead end to the left. Finished the right. We can keep going up. I live at the top of the hill, apparently, so... If I keep going up this way, I'm probably going to get to our home. I haven't gone down, have I? No, I haven't been down here. Oh my god, there's so many ways to go. This game is so big. I mean, I'm obviously near the end of it, but I've already played it for... Uh, three, four, five, like five hours or so? Chris, what a pleasant surprise to see you here. And on a school day. There must be a reason that you came here at such a time. I, Father Alvin, implore you. If you have anything weighing on your mind, please, speak. Fruit juice? Chris, if you want some of our sick fruit juice, you should come to our service. Our choir sounds a bit thinner since your brother went away. What happened? Okay, so it is something that happened to our brother. Not Asgor. But Asriel, what happened to Asriel? Chris, it would be wonderful if you would sing with us. Or even participated to any extent. Instead of just trying to drink the fruit juice. Uh, yeah, no thanks. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. What's this? It's like this little, a couple of black pixels here. Like a line of black pixels at this tree that isn't on any of the other trees. Is this a thing? Doesn't seem like it. I'm trying to use it. It's weird that that looks different than everything else. I look at the way the shadow moves on the ground. Shira, a karaoke microphone for a brave singer. Muddler, a big bone for the leader of the pack. Crystal, snowy gemstone for a proud mother. Gerson, renowned historian, author, and teacher. Gerson Boom Memorial Bench. Throughout my career, some of my best ideas came from dreams. Take a rest here. If anyone asks, you're writing. The music disappeared. Whoa. Why does this feel ominous? It's locked. Huh. Oh, listen to that noise. Here, let me amplify it.
I can barely hear it, but it's a very unsettling, groaning kind of noise. Trying to use it from the back, can't do anything. Yeah, something's really wrong with this. It's a scary place. It's even more disturbing that there isn't any information on it, right? Like, you examine it, it just says, it's locked, that's it. Fact that it doesn't say anything else, and then the music gets happy again up here. It's very weird. The mayor's charisma is about zero. No, it's negative. But she works hard and has a good track record, so she runs unopposed. That's politics. Rarely. <laughs> True. <laughs> That's pretty rare, actually. Small pine tree. A painting of the town. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the mayor's busy right now. If you need to see her, please try causing some terrible crisis. Hey, short stuff. Why would you possibly need to talk to the mayor? Your allowance too low? Ate too much candies? Lost your frisbee in the wash? Hey, hey short stuff. That's what the cops are for. <laughs> okay, now I think we can go up. Uh, let me check left and right. Okay, yeah, that's it. So, let's continue up. Oh my god. I was going to go all the way to the right and go from right to left, but maybe I should go from left to right if it goes that far to the right. That was a lot of words. I hope you enjoyed them. Oh, hi, Chris. Did you need help with your homework again? I know you were having trouble last time, so... Uh, I actually got a few things ready for you, in case... Uh, wait, sorry. I can't right now. I forgot my house key again, and... I'm sorry, Chris. I'll help you later, if that's okay. See, it's cool, Chris. Um, Chris? Did you want to talk about something? Uh, tell me about your key. Huh? Why don't I ask my mom for the key? I, I mean, um, I, you know, she doesn't like it when I bother her when she's working. Don't worry, okay? I'll just go over to Caddy's. It's an ornate gate. Appears to be locked. Well, Chrissy, like, what's up? Give Aunt Caddy a hug. Mwah. I'm not even actually your aunt. Oh my god, can I talk to you about something? Actually, like, anything, though. Your choice. Asriel. Oh my god, Asriel. Like, what a cutie pie. Do you remember when we, uh, when me and him went to the dance? That was, like, the best night ever. Even though I spilled the entire punch bowl all over him. And danced inappropriately in front of your mom. And got arrested in the parking lot for making a scene. <laughs> that was so much fun. Tell him I said hi. Tell him I said hi? Okay, so it's not like they're missing or dead or something and everybody knows it. Right? Like, as far as they know, everything's perfectly fine. So what... What's what's going on with Asriel? Aw, oh, Chris, like, if you want to come in, our cat flap is, like, always open to you. <laughs> Aw. I might even fit. Various cat-themed junk is piled up inside the house. Seems to be a bit of a cat sty. Hey, neighbor Baper? When's your brother Doug gonna come by? Doug? What are you talking about? My girls would love to see him. He's a sweet little man. He's just got one problem. He doesn't like my wife's cooking. What's wrong, Douglas? You don't like frozen cat food? It's a broken grill. It smells like burnt cat food. There's some kind of scratching noise coming from inside. Chrissy, it's like a long time no see. What's up? Do you want to talk about something? Go away? 
Uh, memories? Remember that time you wanted to hang out with us big kids? I was like, yeah, of course, just get us some burgers. Then, like, amazingly, you actually got them. So I told you to go back and get some french fries, too. Then, a dozen miniature cakes. They were so good, I ate like six. Then I, like, suddenly got so sick I had to go home. Man. So like, anyway, Chris, are you busy? Neighbor? Ah, that chick next door drives me nuts. I keep seeing her everywhere I go. She's a total copycat. Like, why, though? Doesn't she realize she'll never be me? Honestly, her whole family's, like, so trashy. Once her sister served me a coffee, and I swear it was half cat fur. Ew. Like, get a hairnet, girl, for, like, your whole body. Knock, knock. I'm afraid no one's home right now, darling. Now, why don't you prance on home? Who just said that, then? I'm telling you, they're not home right now. Ah, you just wanted to talk to me? My apologies, beautiful. I'm afraid I'm a bit of a nobody. Oh, I'm not even in control of the character right now. It's a cutscene. Dum da dum. Oh, someone there. Just a moment. Ah, uh, yeah, so I, this is, of course, um, uh, Asgore. And I guess this would explain why Asgore is always giving um, Alphys flowers. They work at a flower shop. Well, that explains at least where they're getting the flowers from, not necessarily why they're giving flowers. Almost finished watering these flowers. Here we are. Howdy, how can I... Oh, Chris! Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot if you don't... If you, uh, like hugs like that. If you... I forgot if you don't like hugs like that. What? Well, now make yourself at home, Chris. You can help yourself to anything you like. There are various flowers inside. It's a cash register. How much change inside? It's a flower. Some kind of catalog. There's a car magazine underneath. Say, Chris, I was thinking. Perhaps when Asriel comes home. Okay, so Asriel just went on, like, I don't know. They just went away to do something? For a while? Uh, we could all go to the diner, just like old times. Okay. But see, like, there's no way Asriel just went away for a bit and then now is coming back. Because Asgore talking about maybe when they get back we could go to the diner just like old times. Like, calling them old times suggests something like years ago, right? Not days or weeks or even months. That's like years to say old times. My treat. Doesn't that sound yummy? It's a note. It says, No rent received. Again, stop giving away flowers. Start selling them. You have one month. Various bags of soil. Dirty watering can. Cyan flower protected in a container. Some dirty fur stuck in the drain. <laughs> Always the case. Rusty fridge with some photos on it. Oh, Chris, if you're hungry, uh, help yourself to anything you want. See photos. A photo of your mother and father on their wedding day. She's holding a bouquet of seven flowers. A reindeer-looking monster stands nearby in a tuxedo. They all look happy. 
that would be the seven flower colors that are here. Let's open it. All that's inside is a jar with a single pickle in it. You decide to pass. It's a small TV. On top are some superhero comics. Is this boarded up? It's a door, it's locked. It looks like it's boarded up, which is kind of creepy. It's an air mattress. It's certainly not king-sized. Uh, Chris, do you want to sleep over? You could use that air mattress, and I could uh, use those bags of soil. Perhaps not. Yeah, so they are definitely split up at this point. So maybe Asgore's just been out of the picture for a long time. And that's why they talked about, like, old times going to the diner, and maybe Asriel therefore hasn't been away for a super long time. It's just Asgore that's been away. Oh, Chris, before you go. Here, uh, for your mother. Our secret. <laughs> okay, flowers, of course. Have a great day, Chris. It's your dad's truck. The floor of the front seat is littered with old papers and country CDs. Oh, these are the two gay, hashtag totally not gay people, right? Nothing better than hanging the lake, uh, hanging at the lake with my best bro. Oh yeah, that's these two. Watching the waves go by. True. Oh, that's it. It's a metal picnic table. Cigarette butts lay on the ground underneath it. Stick your fingers into the holes in the table? Yes. Your fingers don't fit through the top anymore. You try from below. Your hand became covered in cobwebs. Ew, yeah, that happens. What's... what's this? Hmm. I like the way the water looks. It sort of looks like there's kind of... whoa. Hey! Hey there, noticed you were here. It's me, you know me, right? Of course you do. I'm real popular, I just don't have any friends. <laughs> but it's okay you're here because you're... you're... You, you here. Will you be my friend? Y yes Oh, I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy. I... I don't know what to do. I don't remember being this happy before. What's your name, friend? Hippopotamus or Chris? Uh... Hippopotamus? Hippo... Hyper... Hopper... Um... Hippopotamus. That's you. Big name, but it's worth it. Oh, excuse me, I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, actually, since no one talks to me, I forgot my own name. Uh, Hippopotamus, can you give me a name? <laughs> Asriel the second. Hmm. Well, I think Onion is their actual name. But... Beauty. Wow, what a wonderful name. Feels like my self-esteem's in full bloom. Feels like my head's about to flower. Wait, what was the name? B Buddhist? Yeah, perfect. The taste, the smell, the... Thank you for giving me a name. I'll cherish it, you hear? Um, hippo... Hippo potato mask, that's your name, right? I want to tell you something. Uh, tomorrow. Something I can only tell a friend. Come back soon, you hear? That's... 
not disturbing at all. Oh, we're home. Is your mom's it's your mom's van? I bet there's secrets in the town, hidden pathways through the forest or something. Welcome home, honey. Did you have fun with your friend today? By the way, I just finished baking a pie. If you go to bed, it'll be cool when you wake. But do not eat it all this time, alright? Doesn't seem to be... to even be plugged in anymore. Chris? What is it, honey? Uh, flowers. Oh, Chris, flowers? For your mother? How sweet. These are from him, are they not? Uh, well, worry not, Chris. I will find some place for them. Pie. Chris, since only you and I are living here right now, it feels just a bit lonely, does it not? But fortunately, sharing a warm, freshly made pie is the perfect cure for such a condition. As long as I get to eat some, of course. Chris, honey, you've grown up so much. Someday soon you'll be going off to university as well. Wait, going off to university as well? Does that mean as well as Asriel? Did Asriel go to university? Are they that old? I thought they were super young. Remember when you were little? You asked when your horns were going to grow in? So we bought that headband with the little red horns on it? <laughs> you wore it for months. Whatever happened to it? Asriel. Remember that video game you and Asriel used to play? What was it called? Super Smashing Fighters? When he was very little, he loved the green lizard from that. We even had a birthday party for him themed around it. Your father painted all those eggs with spots as decorations. Oh, your brother loved it. Until the next day, your father cooked them all for breakfast. Your brother just kept crying. Ever since, he's hated that book about eating green eggs. Landline phone, you already have a cell phone. So I think this is the same description for all this stuff as when we first left the house at the beginning of the game. It's a butterscotch cinnamon pie. Still cooling. There's a can of uh, Icy's Cool Boys Body Spray. Spray for the boys' flaming hot pizza flavor. Seems to be almost entirely full. Yeah, who the hell would use that? Flush it? Yes. You flush the toilet. There's a small container of apple-scented shampoo on the shower ledge. And a gallon-sized container of pet shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> For all the goat fur. Many books. Yeah, I've already seen that. Still have that creepy stain on the ground that looks like blood. It's stained. I guess we'll just go to sleep. If you go to bed, this chapter of your adventures will end. I think it's time to sleep. You decided to go to bed.
That's not normal. No, that's definitely not normal. What the hell's wrong with them? Ever since they woke up before heading to school, they looked sickly and strange. shadows start to grow and the places that you know seem like fantasy there's a light inside your soul that's still shining in the cold with the truth the promise in our hearts don't forget I'm with you in the dark Alright, let's end with some thoughts on Chapter 1 of Deltarune. So I thought I would show you this. I wanted to start off with this. And I'll link this in the description of this video, by the way. Hopefully I remember. But Toby Fox, the main person behind Undertale and Deltarune, uh, tweeted out a link to a, a twit longer whole thing. Pretty long, actually. Basically talking about the creation of Deltarune, like where it comes from, what's going on with it, what they're working on next, and all that stuff. I've learned quite a bit from reading it. I, I didn't read it before actually playing it, of course. I've just read it now after finishing Deltarune Chapter 1. And from what I've seen about like, yeah, first question here, is this a sequel? What's going on? I'm scared. Apparently, don't worry about it. Apparently it's nothing. Like, it's not exactly a prequel or a sequel or anything like that. So maybe that's why the whole prequel thing didn't quite fit with what I was trying to, like I was trying to ram it being a prequel into my understanding of Undertale, which at this point is over a year old and I've forgotten a lot of the story. But it sounds like, don't worry about it. A lot of similar characters, definitely some similarities, but it's just set in a different world. Deltarune's world is a different one. Deltarune took everything that I liked about Undertale and also improved upon it. So it still has the usual stuff that I like. It's a fantastic soundtrack that's really catchy. It has the same sense of exploration that Undertale did, where there's always, in every little corner of the world, there's unique stuff to see, either flavor text or some like secret chest to find with some items inside of it. But if you poke around the world, you're always going to find stuff. And the characters continue to be one of the greatest strengths of the, I guess you can call it a universe at this point, um, because they're so, they're so well realized, right? Even like everybody. Even if they're the strangest looking thing physically, like they're just a puzzle piece or something, every damn character is interesting and has their own often quirky little personality and they're likable. They're all really relatable. Everybody's done uh, written with such kindness and respect. I just love like almost every damn character. I mean, Susie was one of the biggest characters that I didn't like in the beginning because, well, I mean, they were they were a dick. Think about one of the first things they did is um, pick up Chris off the ground and shove him against the locker and threaten to bite their face off. That's horrible. But then afterwards, they like like they were humanized and made so just like uh, sweet and kind of ridiculous in a really fun, funny way, you know, being very bashful and 
uh, some other words that I can't think of to describe the personality, but they became so likable. Chris is, well, Chris is sort of a non-character. Ralsei's absolutely adorable. So fluffy. So all the good things of Undertale, still there. But they did some really interesting stuff to improve on top of it. So they made a, a major change to the battle system. They kept the bullet hell type encounters where you are a heart. You play a heart and you need to dodge projectiles and all sorts of uh, unique stuff happening in the encounters. But the stuff around the turn-based combat is very different because now instead of just you being the one fighting in combat, there's multiple characters, sometimes two, sometimes three. And you can control all of them for the most part. And that makes for a lot of unique situations where one character like Ralsei, who's the class cannon, might be more hurt or just more susceptible to damage than, than Chris or Susie. So you got to worry about them more, try to heal them more, try to protect them more. You know, some people can try to act while other people try to spare within the same turn. So you can get rid of an enemy within the same turn, which you could never do before in Undertale. And then there's also whole other bits of, of strategy on top of that with the whole tension point system, basically magic power system. And the fact that getting near projectiles and other things that hurt you with your heart will actually give you TP points as well as defending giving you TP points. That adds more strategy on top of it. And I mentioned uh, kind of, I guess, fairly early in combat when I understood how that whole getting near projectiles would give you TP system, how that whole thing worked. I thought it would like I thought it was kind of confusing because it sort of sounded like you're getting hurt, but what you're just getting TP points. But after using it for a while, I was actually fine with it. I could pretty easily understand the difference between the feedback you get when you get a TP point from being near something versus when you get hit. They're pretty distinct, different sounds. So that wasn't an issue. And in fact, it was just kind of a interesting little, I guess, would you call it a metagame or a mini game? It's like an extra little bit of strategy in that whole system. Not that I ever really needed to do anything in particular. With that strategy, there was never really any point where I was like, oh, I gotta get every single TP point with my projectile that I possibly can. But I could definitely see that really playing out in the rest of Deltarune, outside of Chapter 1. Because Chapter 1 didn't have super difficult combat by any means. Combat in the original Undertale was much more difficult. So if the rest of Deltarune is more difficult like Undertale, then I could definitely see that little bit of strategy really making a big difference. And a super nice quality of life thing is that you no longer have random encounters. So in Undertale, you would just walk around in an area and I don't think you'd ever see enemies. You either never or almost never would actually see the enemies moving around in the world. You'd move and then there would be just like a random chance for every little bit of movement that you would start an encounter, just some sort of a random encounter. So for example, if you wanted to grind enemies, get a bunch of them, you could just like constantly move against uh, the wall and you would just keep moving and like wiggling against it. And that would just give you random encounters. I think I did that to grind money to buy like armor from Temi or something. I don't really remember. Um, but yeah, that's totally different in Deltarune. Any enemy that you're going to encounter, assuming it's not a special boss that you uh, get to from like a cutscene or something like that. But if it's a normal enemy, then you can actually see them in the world. And the encounter only starts when you actually... Either you go up to them or they go up to you, which means, well, it means a couple things. It means, you know, when an encounter is coming, which is really nice because it's always really annoying when you're like right at the edge of a screen in Undertale about to move on to the next one. And then an encounter starts. It's like, oh, you know, you were just like stepping your foot over that threshold to a new screen. And then like, ah, oh, now I'm stuck doing this encounter for another minute or two. Right. It always was pretty frustrating when you didn't want to encounter an enemy, but you had to. And it was just random, just you knew it would happen. But here, you can see when they're coming, and also you can avoid them. They'll kind of chase you, but if you sprint, you can get around them in almost all cases. So that's a really nice quality of life thing. All right, well, I think that's a pretty good place to end this playthrough of Chapter 1 of Deltarune. Um, if you haven't read this twit longer here, then just to summarize a little thing about it, it does talk about what's going to be happening with the future of Deltarune. So Deltarune Chapter 1 is a demo. There is going to be more Deltarune. And basically it sounds like all the rest of the chapters will be released at one time as a whole. So they won't be released in like Chapter 2, Chapter 3. It's just going to be the whole thing once it's done will come out. 
As for when it's going to come out, they have no idea, but they do say that making the demo of Deltarune took a few years, apparently. Which, for the rest of the size that they intend to have, would mean it would take a very, very, very long time to make the rest of Deltarune. So it sounds like they're going to look into actually making a team to help them with a lot of stuff, because right now it's... They do have other people helping them make this game and help them make Undertale, but it is... A lot of it is on them, Toby Fox, so... Making a team could really speed things up a lot. They also have pretty much no experience, actually, like, directing a team, they say. So they have no idea how that's going to go. So definitely very unknown. Who knows? It could take a couple years. It could be five years or whatever until Delta Room comes out. But I will certainly be playing it when it does. Thanks for watching.